Hey guys, what is up and welcome to a new League of Legends video. This one is going to be extra special because I'm bringing out a completely new Zed build. Something I honestly have never seen yet. And I want to give quick shoutouts to Foxtrot for pretty much inspiring this build. So the first thing I'll do is I'll tell you what the build is. And then I'll go a lot more in depth just in case you guys freak out when I tell you. As you saw right there with the text and the animation, the build is of course running Smite in the mid lane with Zed. Now I don't want any of you guys to freak out because I do actually have a lot of pretty good reasons as to why I think this can work. But is it better than the current standard Zed build with Bork, Yomu's Last Whisper, IE? Eh, probably not, but it's an interesting alternative. And much to my surprise, it is quite effective. So here's kind of the thought process that went into making this build, and just the reason for it as well. So Blade of the Rune King has become a staple item on Zed, to the point where if you see a Zed not build this item, you're pretty much questioning what they're doing. Now, as much as I do love this item, and I get it on so many champions that I play it on, I have one big issue with this item specifically on Zed. The build path from Cutlass into the Bork itself is just horrendous. The two daggers that you have to get in order to finish the Blade of the Rune King are just absolutely useless on Zed for a good portion of the game. Since Zed is played more as a spellcaster assassin, I mean you get in a few auto attacks whenever you for instance use your death mark, but he's not really standing there auto attacking for quite some time. Usually you'll be using your E, your Q, you'll be dashing between shadows and maybe you'll get a few auto attacks in at most 3 or 4. So to me, almost whenever I play Zed, I just completely despise the part where I have to finish the Cutlass into a Borg because every time I buy those daggers, I'm just kind of cringing. So with all that being said, that is the idea of this build, to try and avoid this. The primary reason as to why Blade of the Rune King is a great item on Zed, except for the late game part where the attack speed actually helps, is its active effect. And more specifically, the part that slows the enemy champion and the part that gives him move speed. And the reason is quite simple, it helps you stick on your target when you're going in for the assault, especially with your ultimate. So my goal is to try to remove that annoying build path while still keeping the main thing that makes Blade of the Rune King so good on Zed. And the way I do this is by taking Smite mid and picking up a Stalker's Blade. A really good thing I like about Stalker's Blade is the fact that you can of course upgrade it into a Warrior Enchantment which utilizes Brutalizer, which is one of the best items Assassins can get. Now you do have to drop 750 gold for this item just to change the Smite, which until you buy this item will somewhat weaken your laning phase because that Smite is just useful for farming, it lowers your kill potential. But once you finally do get it, it only does have a 60 second cooldown compared to for example Ignite with a lot longer of a cooldown. But it'll slow your opponent by 50% for 2 seconds, while Blade of the Rune King is only 25. And like I mentioned earlier, the fact that Brutalizer can be put into this item to further upgrade it leads to some pretty cool build potentials. For instance, having double Brutalizer effects. But I'm sure most of you have noticed, in order to do this, you are taking away Ignite and you're replacing it with Smite. So let's go into the difference between the two. So taking a quick look at Ignite with its stats, its cooldown is 210 seconds, which is just over 3 minutes. At level 18, it can deal 410 true damage over about 5 seconds, which is pretty impressive. But you of course cannot use it on minions, dragon, baron buffs, it's limited to champions only. But taking a look at the smite upgrade with Stalker's Blade, the cooldown is only 60 seconds, which of course is a minute. The damage at level 18 is only 164, which is about a third. But keep in mind, this damage is instant, not over 5 seconds, while providing a very useful slow. It helps you farm a bit in the laning phase early on because you do get a bit more gold on large minions, you can help contest objectives, and again, the main reason that I love this item so much is that you can get a double brutalizer combo, and this helps your mid game power so so much. So I'm sure most of you are curious to see what exactly is the build path, so let's go into that next. So I definitely do start off with a longsword and 3 pots. If possible, I try farming to about 17 or so hundred gold before I back the first time in order to get a Brutalizer and the upgraded Smite. If you can do that, that is quite ideal, but regardless, you want to get the Brutalizer first and then upgrade your Smite. Following that, you want to upgrade your Smite item into the Warrior Enchantment with the Brutalizer and then get a second one as well. And right now you'll have 20% CDR and you'll have 20 flat armor pen. And another cool thing with this build is that you can achieve 40% CDR very early in the game. And since we're pretty much playing Spellcaster Z, someone that's going to be relying on their spells more than their auto attacks, this is extremely beneficial. But like I said, since we're more relying on our spells and maybe 1, 2 or 3 auto attacks, we have to build around just flat damage. Because the goal is to do as much 
much damage as quick as possible and then just get out. So with that being said, you can get either Lucidity or plus 5 boots into a BF sword and then into a T-Mat, Last Whisper, Bloodthirster, finish off the Hydra and then finish off that Brutalizer into a Black Cleaver. Now you can definitely change around the build order as you see fit because it does somewhat depend on just how well you are doing. For instance, if you are ahead, you want to get that BF sword pretty early. If you're not so ahead, you might want to put it off a bit later and get the Tiamat faster. But I'll leave it to you guys to experiment. For runes, I run flat armor pen reds, I run flat AD quints, HP per level yellows, and then flat MR blues. And then for masteries, I go a 2190 page getting the 4 out of 4 in the CDR because it does give 5%. Don't forget, you get 5% from this, you should get boots of lucidity whether at the start or somewhere later in the game, which is 15%, so that's 20. And then you pretty much have double brutalizer effects, each giving you 10% CDR, which all adds up to 40% pretty early in the game. So before I end off the video, I want to go over some quick positives and negatives of this build overall, just kind of a TLDR. So of course the point of this build is to avoid the annoying Cutlass into Borg build path. It's easier farming in the lane versus aggressive mages like a Syndra due to the smite, so you can almost always get the cannon minion. You get a 50% slow on the smite rather than 25% from Bork, it's overall less gold to spend, which does mean you can go into the stronger items faster. This build focuses on making your mid game absolutely atrociously strong, because you have so many just flat damage auto attack items on top of having the Hydra to give you the auto attack reset for just more burst damage. A typical combo you want to do with this build is to start with your ultimate as you appear you smite, you use your E, auto attack, hydra, use your Q, and that should probably be enough. Even without the death mark having to pop, it could still be enough to finish off a target. As you can see in the video, I have 418 AD at 31 minutes. You can easily help with Dragon and Baron since now you have two smites, which is I guess a pretty good thing. And overall, it's honestly just an interesting alternative build path and playstyle of Zed that I at first was a little suspicious of, I didn't really like it as much, but as I got used to it, I really started to enjoy it and it just felt fresh, on top of feeling stronger than I really thought it would. Some negatives of this build is the fact that you do have less kill potential in the lane until the smite is upgraded. It obviously does not deal as much damage as an ignite would, but it does help you stick on your target so don't forget that. The late game does become a bit of a problem if it lasts just way too long, maybe 40 or 50 minutes because then the smite starts being a little useless and the item in your inventory that upgrades the smite also feels outdated. It is a bit more reliant on the death mark damage than the other standard build with the Boric, with the Yomus, but it really depends on just how ahead you are. And the final thing is the fact that he has a bit less split pushing power due to the lack of attack speed, but not by a whole lot because you can on the other hand clear waves a lot faster on top of just having a lot more raw AD. So you will do less auto attacks against the turret since you just don't have that same attack speed, but each auto attack will deal more damage. So that is it for this video guys, I wanted to go over this build pretty badly and I'm actually quite excited to mention it to you guys. I also am pretty excited to hear what you guys think, I want to see how you do, tell me in the comments below, try it out, send me pictures on Twitter, I'll retweet them if it's a sweet score. And overall I just really want to hear you guys input on this, see what you think, see how you do, so definitely let me know. If you have any questions, definitely write them in the comments below, I'll try answering as many as I can, I'll probably have a reddit thread as well, so you can go there and ask any questions there as well. But overall, I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new. And hopefully this build gives you that sort of fresh play experience on Zed. If you did enjoy, don't forget to like it, share it with your friends, and I hope to see you for the next video. Peace!